Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number seven, focusing on the A note. Get ready and some coffee, and remember, never give up. What do you mean, Phil, why never give up? Because, because if you're going to give to charity, you should give down, not up. I mean, that's kind of the point. Honestly, I don't think I should have to explain this kind of like, like, what, what are you going to do? You're going to give all of your money up to like Bill Gates or something? So he can continue his maniacal plan to micromanage the world instead of just doing what he's good at? Making computers for people for crying out loud? But no, making computers for people's not good enough for Bill Gates. He has to go out and kill all the cows and make everyone eat bugs. That son of a... Honestly. Yeah, I, I think he's the one that needs to adopt the diet of the dung beetle. I hear it's all the rage in Davos these days. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go to that first tab to get that overview. We've been looking at the C major scale. You can also think of the related modes. We started looking at it in open position, which I would define as frets 0 through 3, noting that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. We then wanted to learn the scale by constructing the chords in that scale, starting with the one chord, mapping it out on our fretboard, discussing it in detail. We then went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, same with the five chord, then back to the two chord, which has a minor chord construction, then the three chord, same, the six chord, same, and then the diminished seventh chord, after having done that, if we were to map out all of the chords that we have built, we would basically be mapping out the C major scale in open position, or you can also think of it as the related modes, which would look something like this. We then wanted to jump to the middle of the guitar, fret number five about, and start thinking about that position, not in terms of first constructing chords, but first thinking about the scales and linking them to the open position that we created with the chord constructions. So we then mapped it out and discussed it in detail in relation to all of the notes in the C major scale, which you can also think of as related modes. And now we're moving up to the next position, which we can call, uh, or the position starting on the seventh fret. So this is where we're gonna be at this point in time. We're focused on the seventh fret, which is gonna be this yellow area quick recap of all the colors and all the markings here, noting that all the colors in this section on the fretboard are representing notes in the C major scale and the related uh, modes. So those are all basically good notes that we can play that will be in the scale. We're now going to be focused on the six chord, which is going to be a, a a minor construction. Therefore, our primary focus, the tonic that we're going to be looking at in general, will be the green note or the A. And then the third related to that note is the red note. So that's our second most important number or note. And then the fifth is going to be the yellow. So those are our most important colors. And then all other colors kind of fit in the scale, noting that the blue notes are the ones that we laid down first. That's just the, the C, D, E, F, G, A, B, all the notes. And then we put the green on top of it. And the green is the pentatonic scale that fits on top of the major scales. And then this uh, is going to be the chord construction that we created for the chord that we're focused on, giving us the 135 of that particular chord. And then we have uh, here this bracket right here, this red bracket represents the prior position that we looked at, which you might call a position one, or some people would call it a G-shaped position, because when you look at the related major scale, C scale, you could see that if I look at that C, it's going to build a C, I mean, it'll build a G shape when we make a C chord in this position. So you could call this a G shape uh, position that we're looking at that we then built the major 
uh, scale around, or we can just call it position number one, which I'll use position one. Then we go to the position number two, that's gonna be our focus here, which you can also call the E shape position, because if we look at the related major scale, then uh, there's the C and we can build from uh, that C a basically uh, E shape. And that's our that's gonna be the bar chord. So you could call it that uh, if you so choose. And then I'm gonna move, notice there's some interlap or overlapping between these two shapes. That's what I would call our, our pivot points. That's the ones that we can easily move from one shape to the other. So if I look at this top string, this is what I would call position one on the top string. And this is what I would call position two. So we'd slide up to get here. These two notes are basically uh, in the in-between uh, notes with those two positions. Noting that, I'm going to make this red one down a little bit so we can focus mainly just on this frets 0 through 10. And then the notes within here, these yellow brackets, are representing <clears throat> the major like uh, chord constructions that we would have within here. So if that's my A, you can see I have the 1s, the 3s, and the 5s with a yellow around it. But not all the one threes and fives. You can see these ones don't have a yellow up top because this is like probably the the most common form that we're going to make in this position, which is basically like a D minor shaped A minor chord. That's what these yellow. We'll talk more about that later. And then we did the same thing over here. We're basically mapping out the one three fives, but we're looking at the ones that are most uh, common to a particular shape. This one being basically like the, the E minor shape. And then over here, we of course have our A minor shape. And that's what basically these are doing. This one's mapping out here so we can see like the G minor shape, which is less common. We'll talk more about that uh, in future presentations. So that's the general overview. Now in learning this shape, if I'm practicing uh, in this A, there's a couple ways that we can do that. One, we can look at the scale. I'm going to map out the scale, kind of starting and stopping from uh, this shape. And once we get that in our mind, which means we're basically going to be like kind of in a minor uh, uh, mode here, or the Aeolian, or minor as opposed to the major, but I'm still going to kind of focus on it as though we're just playing the six of the C major as we did with all other modes, even though the minor mode is much more common in, in uh, Western music. But we'll talk about that uh, shortly. And then we can practice basically playing and focusing on everything within this position because we should be able to play everything in any particular position. So I should be able to play basically, we've been building all of the chords basically within side of this position but we still might not be completely comfortable making our switches within this position. So if I'm practicing the A here, I might also think I know all my chords in open position, so maybe I play my chords in open position and jump up to this position just so I can practice kind of noodling around in here while playing something that I'm familiar with in open position. And then we can also think about playing something in this position, which is actually quite common for an, for an A minor, because you've got, this is the A minor kind of shape that most people kind of think of uh, for it. And then we can try to say, how can I blend from going here and smoothly converting from that position over to this position and kind of link them together. And then of course we can link all the way from here, the open notes and say, how can I come up with a line instead of jumping up here to more smoothly kind of uh, moving up here. Now, just remember also that we're, we're thinking of it as the C, the, the, the C major is what we built all of our notes from, but I want to practice playing in the A minor. I'm going to look at that first in open position, noting the ways we've thought about doing this is we can, we can play like in the key of C, starting and stopping on a C, like a C to an F to an E minor, and then to throw in that A minor, and then go back to a C. So I'm working in, I'm practicing my A minor by putting it into the C major scale. But if I want to focus more on the A minor, then I probably want to make it the root. And you might say, well, then I can, so, so then how can I do that? Well, I can just play around the A minor. Now that's going to seem more natural to most people than playing around like the F or that we did before possibly, because minor is the other major or the other big 
uh, type of, of mode that we, that we play. We think of everything as being built off of the major scale uh, in Western music, but really they're all kind of related. You can build everything off of any other, of any other mode. They're all modes. So, so the minor mode is the, is the most common mode. So you, you're, pro you're probably going to think, well, why don't we just switch to the minor? We could. We can make it the one, and then we would have the minor, or it, you can also call it Aeolian mode that we would be in. But we're going to stick to the same kind of concept we've been thinking about before so that we can see clearly how it's related to the major scale. We're just going to say, I'm going to play all the same stuff as the major, and but I'm going to be focused on the sixth as my tonic, making it the starting and ending point, which should be feeling, again, easier with the minor because our ear's more used to it. So I'll just start on a minor to like a C major, to an E minor, to a G maybe, and then back to a minor. So it's not that difficult typically to, to resolve to the A minor because, because of that, it's because our ear naturally says, oh yeah, we're going back to the A minor, but we still don't have that half step whenever we resolve to a, a minor in a minor scale like we do on the major. So to get that, to get a, a better resolve, we could do the same trick. We can see what's the fifth of an A. Well, the fifth of an A is like that note, it's an E. So the E, if I looked at my E in the scale, it would be an E minor. But if I make it a major, then I'm basically just adding, adding uh, this note that's outside of uh, my scale but it leads in, it's going to be that G sharp. It leads into the A. So you can see if I'm playing, there's the E minor, E major, leads in to the A. So that's a common kind of thing that's really nice to do whenever you're playing in a minor, take the fifth and then make it a major when you're going in. So if I'm going A, C, F, G, and then I want to close it out, so I'm going to go to an E minor, which is in the scale, make it a major. And that gives you a little bit more resolution. You can also add, make it a, 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 a seventh, so I could, I could go here and let, let go of my ring finger, adding the dominant seven. And that gives you even more of a, a resolution. Just, so just a couple things to note that we've been taking a look at when we look at these playing in, in the other modes. So that's gonna be uh, the general idea there. Now, if we move that up to here, the major form that we're looking at here, if I look at this A, it's right there. It's gonna be a D shaped, uh, which is a little bit hard to finger. It's not my favorite shape, although I'm liking it more and more lately. And so there, there's that, and then you've got your E, which we looked at before. So if, if you were to convert that to an, to an, an uh, if you were gonna convert this minor to a major, you'd go to it like an E, an A-shaped uh, E major, which could then resolve in to your A minor. So you might try that basically up in this shape as well. All right, so then we're gonna basically uh, count up the scale. So we might wanna get the, the Aeolian no sound in our mind in this shape. So you might say, I'm gonna practice this shape, but I'm not gonna practice it by starting on the B because then it's gonna sound like I'm playing in the B as the center point, which would be like Locrian, right? I wanna make the A the center point. So I'm gonna find the A and I'm gonna say, okay, here's my, Here's my A, it's way down in the middle. Seems weird playing a scale starting in the middle, but it makes sense because we're gonna try to make it the, the home base. And so then I'm gonna, when I play up the scale, I also wanna play the related chord when I get to it. So let's think about the chord first. So we have then this A. So if I look at my one, threes and fives, I have an A, there's my fifth right there. So that's the normal fifth pattern. And then I have my third down here. So you could just play these three notes, this A, this E, and this C. And that's kind of the easiest way to do it. Notice I am kind of have a bar here. Like you might say, this is a bar and I'm gonna end up playing that F sharp, but you don't have to, because I'm lightly putting my finger here, which means it's gonna just mute that note. 
So this string, the A string, the B string is not going to ring out if I play it this way. By the way, I'm also muting the E above it, and I'm trying not to hit with my pick the this E on top. So I'm muting this string, and I'm not I'm not picking the top string. And then if I lay down my A here, then I get another A. So that would be nice. I can lay down my pinky right there and pull in another A. So that's going to be the, the, the normal shape. Now you can also play this shape, which is quite common. Say I'm not going to reach up to that A up top. If I'm down in this register, I can see these three fingers, which I can just convert to that, which is basically the D minor shape. It is the D minor shape, meaning in open position, that would be our D minor shape, which I'm going to be moving up here and then convert it to just these three fingers. That's all you really need if you're playing in that higher register. So that's the other uh, shape that will be quite common. But you also have this shape over here, which can uh, be useful. So here's your A. So this one is going from A, E, C. It's inverted. The A is on the bottom. And then you also have this shape uh, up here. We have the, the C, E, and the A. Once again, it's inverted. A is on the bottom. That's kind of leading into the A minor C shape, which will be basically uh, leaning forward. So those are the shapes that we can kind of land on. So then if I was to count up my notes, instead of making that the one, which is what I would do if I convert it to a minor, I'm gonna count it up as though I'm still thinking of it as the sixth of the major, but it's still the one that I'm gonna be kind of centering around. So, and we'll talk about the modes more later in a future presentations or section. So I'm gonna say that's the six, and then seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six, and so there's my six. I went up to this one here, duh, 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 and all I did was say, this is six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six. And then once I'm on that one, then I can play my, I'm gonna play just this part of my, my A minor shape. I can also convert it to this shape. Alright, and then I'm gonna see say I'm on this one. So now I'm gonna go from six, seven, eight, or one, uh, two. That takes me up to the D. I'm not gonna keep going out this way, I'm gonna go back now. So I was on the two, one, uh, two, one, or eight, seven, six. There's the one I'm focused on. That shape, once again, looks like this, or like this from that note. And then I'm gonna go back, so now I'm on this A again, I'm gonna go back. So we're gonna go from uh, six, uh, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, uh, seven, six. And there's what I'm focused on, the six. So there's the one of the six, five, there's our D shape, there's our full D shape. So now I'm on this A, and there's my full shape. And then I can go back from here, say, okay, I'm gonna go from six, five, wait, six, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven. That brings me to seven right here. Uh, and then I could go back one more, six, right? And there's my, a back here that's outside my shape and there's my chord on that one so then I can go six seven eight one uh, I'm sorry six seven eight or one two three four five six and then just to make it different I can go these top ones or these ones down here so that's a useful little little just to get that in your head the same shape if you start to know this shape because you played it in C then it's pretty easy to play the shape once you start reorientating yourself to playing around the the A 
note, which is kind of funny because you're playing, you're starting and stopping kind of in the middle of the scale, which takes a little while to orientate yourself around. All right, so once you have that, then you could practice like in this position with all the shapes that we have done, you know, thus far, because we should be able to play everything basically within this position. We'll talk more about that in like the cage system and a little bit later as well. But just for now, we can see that we've seen all of the major shapes in this position. So here's like the C, this is a the C major, which is a, which is a, this, you can call this like an, an E shaped C major. You can also see it this way. We talked about the other major shape, which is an F, which is here, which is an A shaped. So here's the F. Here's your, this is an A-shaped F major, the G. Most people would probably move this A-shape up because that's the normal bar construction. But if you're playing it in position, you, you would play, there's the G. You can play this C-shaped G like that. So that's the shape that fits in there, that C-shape that fits in the same position. And then we took a look at uh, the D. So we have our D here. So here's our D here. You could go dun dun dun. That's a minor. So I can call that like a G minor shape, D minor. And then we had our E, which is gonna be right here, which you can call an A minor shaped E. So you could kind of noodle around uh, with that. So we could say if I'm in here, I'm playing my basically my D shape. You could move up to like an A shape to say an F shape, maybe you move to the E shape, and then and then possibly you turn it into a major, which is outside, to get the resolve back to the D shaped A. Now the, we'll work on those switches more later within this shape, because you can't really see all those switches and you might not be as good at, you know, moving, I'm not as good <laughs> at moving around on, in all those shapes as well. We'll play with that later on practicing as well. but. We might know all the shapes in open position, and if I'm just trying to work on this A shape here, then maybe I can noodle around in open position and then jump up here and practice playing up in this position. So to do that, let's let's think about the notes that I have around my A. And so if so I could say, what can I reach around my A? So if I'm, if I'm just going to put my finger here, I'm going to say, all right, what do I have around here? I've got you know, this box, I can clearly see. So that's, that's nice. And I have this nice symmetry with these boxes being kind of opposite. I've got the, t the colored box here, and then the white, and then the colors over here. Whereas when I look down here, I have the two colored boxes here, and then the two colored boxes here. So you can see like a little symmetry kind of there. We also note that the important notes in here is going to be the A and then the fifth is going to be important that's going to be this note and then this c is is going to be important so i can alternate uh between all the notes in the chord i'm in by starting on a to the to to the e and then the third so there's the one three one five one three one five so i can always do something like that All right, and then I, I know I have this double stop of the A and the D below it, so I can always do something. And I got, I've got this note that's also good, so I can play all double stops. And then of course I can always reach down to my full chord this way, or reach down this way to kind of close it out. So I've got something like that. If I was to reach above, I'm going to say, okay, above here, I've got this box. So, so I kind of messed up there, but I've got above. If I was to keep my finger here, I could reach that F and I can reach basically this C and then I can convert from uh, this to this to give me my A minor that's basically inverted, kind of a heavier sound. So, so the interesting here thing as well as I have this open A, 
which is kind of nice. It's always fun to kind of play that open. So if I hit, if I hit those two, now I'm hitting this A and this open string, which is a double A. And then I have this, this C up top, which is the third. So it's kind of interesting to do something like this. I'm muting this, this E when I'm, when I'm don't have anything down. And then I'm putting my finger up here, which is above the mute. So then I've, I'm picking up the C and then I can let go and I have, I have the double A again, so I can do something like. And I can also put my, my finger here so I can, I can go back and forth. I could let that E ring out too because it's in, it's in our scale and it's also the fifth. So, right? And then pull up this, I can pull up this G on, uh, on, 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 on I'm sorry, this, this third on this side to the C. The fifth. When I'm playing this full D as well, again, if I don't mute that E, then I can play that A, I can play that A and kind of ring it out. So that's kind of fun to play. So I've got those up top. And again, the A is kind of nice because you can always play that A in between, open. Which lays the foundation. So I don't always have to go back to like an A, like some like when I play the majors, I have to always go back to the root some at some time to lay down the bass to make sure the ear still hears it and in the key that I want it to be heard in. Whereas here I got that open string. Alright, then down below, what do we have down here? I've got I, I also when I when I play this string down here, I also have this note, which is kind of uh, whoop, interesting. In other words, when I'm playing when I'm playing my normal D, I'm grabbing this C down here, but I can also grab this G, which gives it a little bit more tension because that's the seventh. So I can I can let go of the fifth and grab the seventh. So in other words, I can play it like that. You get a little more tension that way. Notice I'm not putting my finger on this other A to do that. So I have that A, I can let go of that A. And I can grab basically that G. And it gives you a little bit more, uh, like I say, tension on that one. So there's gonna be that general thing. Now if I if I play with this A on this side, Oops. So what do I have over here? Well, I've got, I can, I might want to play that with my ring finger. I know I have this whole box. So if I'm saying I'm focused on this A, then I have kind of like this whole box I can play with. So I can go back. And then I can always end with this shape or this shape. So if I'm playing down here. These three strings are all colored. I'm not going to worry about what I'm playing this whole bar. So we, so we can kind of noodle around in that area. All right, so once we have that, then we can say, okay, I'm going to jump. I'm going to be jumping from let's say like to here so i'm going to play an open position i might play something in open position which i'm comfortable with and then see if i can jump here Oh, 
open strings are still good, so if I'm jumping back and I like pick a couple strings when I'm jumping back, not really a problem. Open strings are good, so like Maybe I once I get to this string up here, uh, maybe I then play the the this C up top and do my little shuffle pattern. And I can also do that shuffle pattern back here, by the way. So I can say, okay, what if I what if I put my finger on this E and I play this open A, and then I switch back and forth between this A and this C. That's what I like. That's just fun to do. So now I'm just going to say, I'm going to do this, the cheating A, A minor. And between those three notes, I basically have all the notes in the A minor. So I can kind of play that and then say, okay, well, I can jump from here and kind of mirror that up here. So now I'm, ju I'm just jumping up to this A where I have the third up top. So here's the third on this side. And, and, then, and then I can reach up to this C and I can ring out this open A. down here when I'm down here I can play that C I can also play this G above it and this one behind it is a minor is it is the is the blues note so I can go in, I can go into that one and I can also let go so if I start playing Kind of shuffle back and forth. That's kind of a fun, a fun thing uh, to do. That's a, another way you can play it. Now we can target then this note up top and do the same thing. So I could play my A here and then say, okay, I'm going to jump all the way up to this A where I have where I have this shape. So I can say, okay. Of course, we could play something other than just an A over here. I could go to my C and do my standard little shuffle within the C, back to the A, and then noodle up here on the A, back to the C, back to the A. Back to the C. Back to the A. C. A. Right, and so we can kind of 
kind of just go back and forth a little bit and, and jump there. That's one way that we can do it. We can also think, well, what can I do from this middle position and kind of blend up into this position and up into this position, right? So this middle position is what most people probably know most commonly as the A position, an A minor, because it has this, like you start the shape on an A, so most people learn it in an A, that's where, what I learned it in. So in this shape you have your, your full bar chord, which is the A boom, 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 boom. I can take that apart and say, well, I can take my finger from here and put it right here, which is actually a little bit more comfortable possibly, and you play these notes, the C, the E, and the A. So that's probably the most comfortable position for me, or this that feeds into then this A, which is our pivot point. And so once I'm here, I can slide in to this position. And so that's how we can go back and forth between those two. That's probably the most common way to go back and forth is between this note, sliding up to that note somehow. So we can, and so we can play something, if I was to play in this position, you know, we can walk up there, A, and then just slide up. And then the question, and then all we're gonna do is say, well, how can I get more creative with that? I'm basically, my pointer finger's up here. So I'm just gonna say, well, this is my pointer finger. And I'm just kind of walking up to there. Then I can say, okay, well, I can go take a pit stop along the road, playing these three, and then the, there's another A, that's the other way to play the A, double stop maybe, double stop slide, something like that, just trying to get a little, just trying to make a little, I'm not even thinking about what chords I'm playing, I'm just saying what's available to me, this whole bar is available to me, this whole thing down to, down to this note is available to me, so we can play. back I can slide on this note is the easiest one right, and then we could we could play this a down here this is the bottom half of that shape so I could start there and say how can I reach up to that a so I could start with that shape, which is an A minor. I can add that. And then slide into that shape. I could then say, okay, how can I get up to this A over here? So if I start on this shape, this is the other way you can play this. A minor like this. Then I could say, uh, kind of sloppy but that gives me up to there which I can then make that D shape from or this A shape and then I can bring this back and say okay I can bring this back on I could say, what can I do with something with these two fingers, right? So if I have these two fingers that I'm holding uh, down, they don't nicely move up at, <laughs> at, at the same point, but I could move them all the way up to this area here, right? So I can move them up to there, and that's gonna actually move me into this uh, C shape. So we could do something like that. So if I, where can I put these two fingers? I'm gonna move them up to here. Double stop. C shape. And then back to my pivot finger down here. And there's my A. Which I could do something like that, right? And then, I don't know, we can, and then we can go all the way from the open position and see if I can find a line that goes all the way through. 
So if I'm playing like an open position here, then I'm playing these three notes with my fingers. My, my finger uh, is on, uh, is gonna be on this note. And this, I missed, let's pull this one down here. <laughs> it's gonna be on this note, that C. So I could say, all right, there's the C right there. I can move that finger up into our familiar position down here, that box. And then I can walk it up from there, maybe to this A right there, right? So I can say, okay, let's say if I'm starting down here. Oh, that's not right. And then I'm like, there's my pivot point. I know this box is always fair game. So I can play that and then I can move that up to here. Now I'm in kind of most people's most familiar shape. My A there into my A here. So if I walk it back, I can pivot on this one. Back in that box is good. Let's try it again. Now it's common that that note right there is by the way is fun to bend typically and then I can that's gonna be your D and then lead into this sh shape right here which is our A minor and then I could slide this going back bending that D A minor then I'm gonna slide back into this shape. And then slide my finger here back into the C position. Notin noticing that any open notes are good because I'm in the C major scale, so. So I'm just taking my finger off the whole time. too much but just so you can kind of see that and then and then we can do our shuffle pattern up top and then I can do what we the same thing follow that a in so I can say let's that's always fun to do so I'm gonna say I'm gonna play my little shuffle pattern and reach up to here and then I'm gonna go move to here and reach up to here and here and then I'm gonna move to here and reach up to here and here and then I'm gonna move to here and reach up to here and here and then I can reverse it right so I'm gonna go okay Let's go from our this. And then move, slide my finger up to here. So now I'm on the F and I'm gonna go, where can I reach from there? Whoops, not, not right there, hold on a minute. So then I can reach up from here to the D. And then I'm gonna reach up, Go. I'm gonna move this up to the G and reach up to the E, and then I'm going to let go, ringing out the A, and then I'm going to move it to an A, and reach up. I could reach up to that, that third over here, and then reach up to the C up top, and then play that A out, right? So I can do some. that back blues note and it in an a a major a minor shape with a g it's a it's a g minor a we can reach up this way just to make it different
that's so those are, those are the major ways that uh, we can practice the minor one of these minor chords here. So so that is that. Uh, then, yeah, that's that. And so no, so notice when we think about the sixth. We don't, I don't need to show you the related minor because the sixth is such a common mode that it, we play it all the time. We think of the major and the minor as the major scales that we kind of play, but really, obviously, the, they're both modes of each other, and, uh, uh, and so we often, there's just the, the major two modes. So, so we, if we were to convert it to a minor, all we would do is make it the first, and we'd have all the same chord shapes just like we saw with all the other shapes uh, here.